All right. Looks like we're ready to go. Thank you for everybody braving the day out. And, I, and I'm not complaining about the warm weather. It's the first set of warm days we've had in months and uh, certainly enjoying it. Well, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Ken Pimelot, Acting Director for CAL FIRE. And welcome to CAL FIRE's Davis Mobile Equipment Facility. I'd uh, first off like to thank uh, our fleet manager, John Carrier, and his staff. Uh, they are the ones who are hosting us this afternoon and have prepared the facility and uh, are allowing uh, us to work around them during their busy schedule of getting our equipment uh, in service and out on the line. And so we appreciate uh, you taking the brief interruption for us to uh, put forward this very important event today. Uh, this facility, like uh, many others across the state with CAL FIRE, maintain all of CAL FIRE's ground-based firefighting equipment and command vehicles. While obviously firefighters do the work and put the fires out on the ground, it would be impossible to do that without equipment to work with. They are truly the backbone of the firefighter uh, throughout the fire service. And when, fire, uh, when wildfire strikes, it takes equipment like this behind me from a multitude of fire agencies, from all the folks you see behind me, across all levels of government to come together to protect life and property and put a stop to the fire. I'd like to take that op this opportunity to thank many of our, really all, of our local, state, and federal partners who have joined us today. In particular today, we have Gene uh, Wade Evans, Deputy Regional Forester with the uh, Region 5 U.S. Forest Service. We have Kim Zagaris, Fire and Rescue Chief with California Emergency Management Agency. We have Rich Subia, Deputy Director with Department of uh, Corrections, instrumental program in our cooperative relationship for our inmate fire crews. Nathan Trauernick, UC Davis uh, Fire Department. Sheldon Gilbert, President of Cal Chiefs, Alameda County Fire Chief. And Demetrius Schaefer, President-Elect. Cal Chiefs. Doug Fry, Chief of City of San Carlos, representing the League of Cities Chiefs. Uh, Lou Paulson, California Professional Firefighters. Also like to introduce uh, Senator uh, Walks uh, Field Representative Don Labar, Assembly Member Mariko Yamada, from CAL FIRE uh, Executive Management, uh, Deputy Director Andy McMurray, uh, Chief of Fire Protection, Deputy Director Janet Berenson, Chief of Administration, Northern Region Chief Bill Holmes, Director of Legislation Steve McLean, Assistant Northern Region Chief Doug Winham. With that, we have a very distinguished guest today, uh, who would I like to have make a few say a few words uh, on behalf of California and in particular Wildfire Awareness Week? I'd like to introduce California's Secretary for Natural Resources, John Laird. Uh, Secretary Laird um, has a great deal of experience w working in California. He was appointed by Governor Brown in January as the state's uh, natural resources secretary, but prior to that, he's worked in the legislature and in local government uh, in a number of areas, including the county of Santa Cruz. So without further ado, Secretary Laird. Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. Uh, the governor has proclaimed uh, Wildfire Awareness Week starting today, and that uh, proclamation is going out statewide so everybody knows and what we're doing here today is acknowledging the beginning of the fire season and what we have to do to be ready for it in the last five years there's an average of 7,000 uh, wildfires that have burned over 900,000 acres of land in California and the thing that is misleading in some ways is that people believe that because we just had our heaviest rainfall season in many years, that it means that even though the fire season is starting later than it has in recent years, that somehow we are less at risk in California. And I just know from having spent 23 years in elected office in a heavily um, mountainous and forested area, that heavy rainfall seasons cause extra fuel to grow 
and when it dries out, it actually sometimes puts areas at greater risk with a wildfire, and so we cannot in any ways rest on our laurels. And because there's been this growth in the number of wildfires, the state has had to stand ready in ways that it didn't as recently as 10 or 15 years ago. And the significant thing you see right here is all the partners that are standing behind me. Because I was mentioning, I recently talked uh, to the top staffers at CAL FIRE, and I mentioned that one Thursday when I was in the legislature, I was pulling out of the Capitol, and just as I pulled out, the traffic report said that four miles of Highway 1 had been closed between Aptos and Watsonville. And it was because there were the first stages of the Trabing fire. And by the time I got to the summit of the Santa Cruz Mountains coming from California, I was pulling over to be passed by fire units from Concord and southern Santa Clara County and other places that were staging to do a coordinated response. So this partnership of many agencies is very key to helping CAL FIRE as we move into these seasons. And this is an important event today because it lets everyone know that fire season is starting, we have to be ready, people can take individual actions about defensible space, we can take actions collectively with our partners to try to be ready and mobile and uh, help fight the fires as they come. So thanks for this, we're gonna do our best to get out the word with the governor's proclamation and eventually uh, his declaration and we'll be ready to fight fires this season. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Secretary Laird. Every year, California answers the call to nearly 350,000 emergencies and calls for service, including an average of over 5,000 fires, 5,000 wildland fires. Wildfires have plagued our state affecting lives, destroying property, and impacting our environment. The aftermath is often just as destructive as they can result in flooding and mudslides. They can also adversely affect our economy. Every year we've asked to take a guess at how bad this year's fire season is going to be. The truth is there are many, many factors that impact California's fire season, and it's impossible to predict or guess any one year is going to be worse than the other. But we look at things like weather conditions, we look at vegetation buildup and the conditions, and we do our best to determine uh, where things are going uh, and make our best uh, judgment calls on staffing based on operational need. So far this year, California obviously has experienced above average rainfall across the state. We know we've got a significant snowpack. Uh, this increased rainfall and precipitation uh, has left most of California, particularly the northern half, abundantly green uh, with grass and green foliage. Because of this, many areas, fire season is going to be delayed, maybe by a few weeks, maybe by a month, depending on where you're at in the state. But one thing we know for sure, as warmer temperatures, like we've seen here in the last week with warm temperatures and wind, uh, the grass and brush will begin to dry out and fire danger will dramatically increase. And as we all know in California, it's not a matter of if a wildfire is going to occur, it's a matter of when. So while things are still green, residents should take the time to make sure that they are ready for the coming wildfires. This year's publication message is Wildfire is coming, is your home ready? CAL FIRE has launched a new website, can be found at www.readyforwildfire.org. This is to assist homeowners in preparing for wildfires. The site offers steps residents should take to make their home more resistant to wildfires and to ensure that their family is ready to evacuate early and safely when a wildfire strikes. Consistent with our message, we offer ready, set, go. The get ready portion, prepare your property and your family well in advance of a wildfire. This includes maintaining 100 feet of defensible space by clearing dry grass, brush, and leaves from around your home. Remove all leaves and needles from your roof and gutters. 
use fire-resistant building materials, which help to resist flying embers that can often travel to a mile ahead of the fire. The set portion. Your family should have a disaster plan, not only for wildfire, but for all types of disasters, including floods and earthquakes. The plan should have at least two ways out of your neighborhood in case one of them is blocked. The go. Wildfire is very dramatic and can move or change direction quickly. There may not be time for officials to issue warnings. Be prepared to evacuate your home early. Leave before it is too late. We are asking you to prepare now, so I believe it's important for us to share and for you to know what we are doing as the fire service to prepare for the impending increase in wildfire activity. Our men and women are engaged in their version of spring training, honing the skills necessary to perform the wide range of emergency response duties required of them. Cal Fire's nearly 5,000 full-time men and women will be bolstered by a seasonal workforce of over 2,000 firefighters. Cal Fire trains and oversees over 4,000 inmates in cooperation with the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Cal Fire is performing defensible space inspections along with our local government partners and talking with homeowners about what they can do to improve the chance of their home surviving a wildfire. Our fleet of engines, dozers, and emergency crew transports, like you see behind us, uh, are ready to go. Maintenance of CAL FIRE's fleet of 53 firefighting planes and helicopters, the largest of its kind in the world, is on schedule and the aircraft will be placed to provide rapid initial attack at their bases across California. Local government's paid and volunteer firefighters are valued partners along with our federal cooperators uh, in response to wildfires, as well as our brothers and sisters in military service. I would like to introduce Acting Director, or excuse me, Acting Secretary of the California Emergency Management Agency, Mike Dayton. Secretary Dayton will speak today about California's mutual aid system, uh, which is really the best in the world. Mike. Thanks, thanks Director. Well, thank you, Director. Thanks for calling us all together. Um, the mutual aid system is apparent here when you look at this great partnership we have. I mean, really, the professionalism, the commitment, of the folks standing behind this podium, th this is your this is your team for emergency preparedness and fighting fires in California. And if there was a draft, every one of these folks would have gone in the first round. But no matter how talented we are, we sometimes need people to be prepared individually. And that's why we are here today is to get people's attention, to tell them to help us out. We want you to be prepared. We want you to have a plan. We want you to to prepare your house your home we want you to defend it and we want you to have a disaster preparedness kit so with your help we know we will be prepared this year so thank you very much i would also like to invite up colonel spano to speak a few words on behalf of the national guard good afternoon thank you very much uh, the California National Guard is proud to be part of this partnership of all of our brothers and sisters behind me today that, that are committed to the protection of property and lives in California. California National Guard has been fighting fires for a long time, and I must say, I fought my first fire with Cal Fire in 1992 on the, on the, uh, the Fountain Fire along with the U.S. Forest Service, and we've come a long way since then in the partnership that we formed with these agencies. We've come a long ways in a couple different ways. For one, we've developed a cooperative agreement that facilitates a process that has improved efficiency in which we're able to get our California National Guard assets to the fire as promptly and quickly as possible. And we're able to sustain on the fire as long as we possibly can. And I must say, just a few weeks ago, we just performed our annual fire training with CAL FIRE in which we had approximately 130 members of the California National Guard from our flight crews, in which we conducted everything from our academic training to our actual flight training, in which we actually went out and did water bucket drops. And it was great to see. It was the most that I've ever seen participate in one event. Part of this is because we've been a little bit busy with, uh, with our mission overseas. But the one thing that I must say, since 1992 to today, 
is although we have the California National Guard deployed around the world, the skills that we've picked up from our deployments overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan and the mission sets that we've had and flying some of the mountainous terrain over there, plus the training that we have back here in California in fighting the fires has become very mutually efficient and has helped us in both ways. And we're proud to be part of this partnership and we're proud and ready and stand ready today when called upon by CAL FIRE to deploy forward. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Spano. Yes, I, California has probably the most complex uh, system for emergency response in, in the nation, primarily because we have the, lots of jurisdictions, we have numerous um, uh, areas across the state, and we have lots of disasters. And California, because of that, has evolved to develop the most cooperative, integrated system of emergency response and fire protection anywhere in the world. And it's the folks standing behind me uh, that really make that work. There are many, many things that go on on a day-to-day -day basis behind the scenes that most folks in the state don't see to make the emergency response system work and to provide the protection to California uh, that it needs and deserves. So my appreciation to all of the folks standing behind me for their, their cooperation and the work we do together uh, to make California uh, the safe place that it is. Uh, also behind us today is one of our brand new mobile communications centers. Communications is vital to the protection of emergency response personnel. Without adequate communication, people involved in battling the fire can't share valuable information about fire conditions or safety concerns. CAL FIRE's mobile communication centers are rapid response emergency incident communication systems. Dispatchers can monitor incident radio traffic and communicate with personnel on the incident as well as communicating and coordinating with local emergency command centers. Without the assistance of CAL EMA, Secretary Dayton, Chief Zagaris and others, and a grant program from the Office of Homeland Security, these two vital communications vehicles would not be possible. Again, the cooperation that goes forward with California's emergency response team, if you will, is unparalleled anywhere in the country. And I'd like to thank the entire group uh, for their support. Uh, before we conclude, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Director uh, Janet Upton, our communications director, and her staff, uh, Daniel Berlant, and the other staff who coordinated and put the event together today uh, and made this happen. Uh, that's the end of the program, but before you leave, I would like to ensure we've got uh, tours are available of any of the fire apparatus here, uh, including the Mobile Communication Center, if you'd like to stick around for a few minutes and uh, have the opportunity to see that. With that, we will conclude. Thank you very much.